How and why did you decide to write an anti-Islamic book? I thought to myself, Islam is a lie. Islam is a danger. What resources did you use while doing your research? I started writing to several authorities on these religious matters. And one of the guys that I wrote to was Sheikh Abdul Hakim Murad. And he's a professor from Cambridge University. But in a way, it was kind of strange, of course, because I was a politician back then still. I was writing an anti-Islam book with an anti-Islam purpose. And I'm asking this Muslim professor from another country, can you help me? <laughs> So I told him, I'm writing a book. I have a lot of questions. So I, I was very plain why I thought, why is Islam promoting terrorism? Why is anti-woman? Why is anti-Christian, anti-whatever? After, I think, six weeks, he, he sent me a, a very extensive email. And he started explaining, directly answered a lot of my questions. But he also told me, you have to read this article, read this book, read that book, ask this person. But in the end, after I read all these books and articles and made com a comparison between prophets from the Old Testament, Testament with Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, I had no arguments anymore to say they are prophets and he is not. And I thought to myself, well, if I accept Moses on these grounds and I cannot accept the prophet, then there is something else. So I thought, why don't I think he is a prophet? And I thought, oh, perhaps because he had many wives. But then again, when you look at Solomon or you look at King David, Abraham, there are a lot of people in the Old Testament that had more wives. So I thought to myself, well, that cannot be a reason either. So one by one, on all these reasons fell. And in the end, I thought, well, I have to say all of them are not prophets, but I, I didn't believe them. And then I said, well, then I have to accept that Prophet Muhammad perhaps is a prophet too. So I was doubting it. And the one thing that I think was very wise of Abdul Hakim Murad to say was, he said, well, the books you read about with the anti-Islam arguments are written by non-Muslims. He said, if you want to know more about Christianity, you don't read books from atheists. You start reading the books from the Christians. Why do they believe? this? What are the arguments? So that you have to do the same with Islam. So start reading Islamic books from Islamic teachers, from Islamic scholars, etc. And then you can see if you compare the books on the same topic of people who are Muslim and wrote those books and non-Muslim, you can see where they took the wrong turn, where they translated words in the wrong way, sometimes perhaps even not on purpose, but just because they didn't know where things are added, where things left out of it. So, and in the end, you see there is this other religion almost created because of all these things. And that's what I did. And that's what I also did with the life of the prophet. And it was the first time that I saw him not so much as a warlord, because that's the picture I had in my mind, but I saw him as a father and I saw him as a friend and a teacher and so much more. And so, yeah, I saw the person and his character and I said, well, I can say a lot, but I cannot say that this is not a good man. What surprised you the most while doing your research? The story about Hint, there was something that like a switch, like I had to change. And it was because I thought Hint was the wife of one of the enemies, Abu Sufyan, and in a way they gave money to kill Hamza, the favorite uncle of the prophet. And that was what happened on the battlefield. He got killed. They even paraded with his ears and cut off his nose and horrible stuff. So the prophet was deeply sad, of course, of what happened. And years and years later, he became powerful. He came in power in Mecca. And then there was Hint. And I was reading this book and I thought, okay, now she gets crucified or her head gets cut off or something like that. But he said, well, I cannot look at her right Right now but everybody is forgiven and if you want to stay here and live among the Muslims it's possible if you don't want that you can go but bloodshedding is over now and I thought to myself that she was forgiven if you can forgive someone who kills a relative especially a favorite uncle of you even starts parading with parts of his body to show other people that she humiliates you and whatever you stand for that means you have such a great character it's very special it's it's, it's something you don't see and that's what he did so I thought to myself well it was a really special guy and and when I thought that, I thought, yeah, well, I have these arguments for him being a prophet. I see his character. I see the way he treated other people. I see how he treated his enemies. I think he is a prophet. But then I thought to myself, whoa, that's horrible. Because I already accepted this oneness of God. And now I say he is a prophet. If I say there is only one God and Muhammad is his prophet, that's almost shahada. <laughs> so I thought to myself, okay, let's close the books. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> this is going in the wrong direction. I put all the books away and I put uh, the books on the highest shelf but there were so many books that a lot of books fell off the shelf and one of the books that fell off the shelf was the Quran and when I picked it up my hand was on a page with Surah 22 Ayat 46 and it says it's not the eyes that are blind but the hearts and I thought to myself 
that really is my problem because it wasn't the eyes. I, I really could see what I written down myself. Nobody forced me to write this book. Nobody said you have to write this or that. I started writing myself and I could see it with my own eyes, but I still couldn't accept the fact that I said he is a prophet. There is this one God. I just couldn't. So it wasn't my eyes that were blind, but it was really my heart. I couldn't accept it. I think my nafs or my nafs or whatever, my ego, I, I couldn't accept it. And I said, well, God, I don't care if it's the God from the Bible or the Quran, give me a sign or something so that I 100% sure know this is the way. And I went to bed, but when I woke up, I felt very secure in myself. I really felt very secure. I, I've never been more secure about anything else. The whole anxiety or the whole doubting issue disappeared like, like snow for the sun. And I thought to myself, well, I think I'm a Muslim.